Hello, thanks to everyone for joining me. I'm so glad to be here and share with you a way to inject force into HTTP messages. Then uh, you can see my subtitle, no invasive to applications means we do not need to change any code of our applications. We can inject or recover HTTP force in the any time when applications are running. Uh, before getting started, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. My name is Chen Xili. I am a core developer of Cosmesh at PinCap. During the last year, I was working on improving stability and recoverability of Cosmesh and enhancing tools to debug and foster recover faults. Moreover, I also worked on implementing and improving the HTTP chaos and IO chaos. The experience gave me a fresh look at chaos engineering and Cosmesh, so I'm very glad to share it with you. Uh, okay, let's start. Today, I'm going to talk about foreign contents. Uh, I will introduce the Cosmesh projection and share the implement, implementation details of HTTP chaos and share the usage of HTTP chaos. And finally, I will talk about more features about the TLS support and the plugin system. Well, does everyone know what is the chaos engineering? In my understanding, chaos engineering means we should inject error on a system and emulate the incidents in, or, in order to build confidence in the system's capacity to withstand turbulent conditions in production. But how, how could we emulate the incident environment? How could we inject errors into a running system? This is the main problem chaos, chaos engineering going to resolve. There are many different tools you may need for a, a chaos, near, chaos experiment. You need S-Trace or BBC to inject system core. You need IPTables or IPSAT to emulate, to emulate network partition. You need to understand the traffic control system of Linux and use TBF or Net Emulate and several other tools to emulate the, the bandwidth and the network latency. You may need fields to inject file system error and you need to use JSNG to ban your CPU or memory. You need to inject in different layers and different aspects. So you need a lot of different tools. You should also be careful with them because your applications may run on cloud, but most of these tools work on bare metal. If you have tried to use these tools manually, I bet that before you find bugs through the chaos, your brain will get chaos and burn. So if you are experiencing the difficulty to use chaos engineering tools in your situation, or if you are willing to give it a try but haven't decided where to start, fortunately, chaos mesh came to the world. Chaos mesh is a cloud native chaos engineering platform with a powerful chaos toolkits and friendly interface to use and program. These highlighted words are three key features of Chaos Mesh and, and are also the design targets of Chaos Mesh. Mm, firstly, let's talk about the Cloud Native. Cloud Native is the most clear feature of them. Our software will run on the cloud and we also should test them on cloud. Chaos Mesh highly depends on Kubernetes. It runs in Kubernetes cluster and its components are scheduled by Kubernetes. Secondary, 
all the chaos experiments of chaos mesh are pod-wise or container-wise. We will not affect other services running on the same machine with the target port or container as battery. This feature brings us a lot of difficulty in developed as the isolation ability of Linux processes is not enough. So uh, there has been spaces and groups. And Cosmash can be deployment with Kill, which makes the installation very fast and easy. You can see just one line, just script, you can install Cosmash. And finally, uh, Cosmash is also featured with friendly interface and the chaos experiment is managed as custom resources, uh, which means if you are if you are familiar with Kubernetes, you did not you do not need any other technologies to create or cancel chaos experiment. The interface of chaos mesh with other resources such as pods support and deployment. You can create, delete, list, or edit them by the Kubernetes control. Uh, also, you can use the programmable way like the Go client and the Java client of the Kubernetes. You have two, many ways to, uh, to handle them. And there is a, uh, much more friendly interface is our dashboard, building dashboard, which is another, uh, another dashboard. Yes, uh, it provided more feature, more features for Cosmash. You should, you can just use the uh, uh, graphics interface and mouse and keyboard to create a experiment. As a chaos engineering platform, I briefed the chaos toolkits as the basis of the competitive jumps. So here come with the third key feature of chaos mesh, powerful toolkit. It's always on our first priority to collect new diamonds and enrich our weaponry to break your system. Here I list several different chaos tools provided by chaos mesh. We designed this tool to emulate different situation. With these tools, you will be able to join much incidents before running in production, such as joining for lost network connection or kernel fault. Now, let's focus on our main topic today. Yes, uh, uh, do you know uh, the what at least as the podcast is a uh, uh, is a function to cure of a four port and network chaos and to delay lost network so and let's talk about an http chaos so about delay patch and replace functions uh why so why we need http chaos and how it is implemented and how to use it let's see the hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP, is one of the most popular application level protocol, especially web applications and cloud native applications. As developer of cloud native application and a human in the network society, I use HTTP almost in any time I stay as Scream. For I, I use Twitter, YouTube, Google in my prayer time and use GitHub Kubernetes in my work time. I believe many uh, is the same, almost the same with me. Once you use web applications, you must have met 30 responses. Actually, false widely existed in HTTP messages some of them are expected and others aren't. Once an unexpected force occur, both human and programs are likely to have no idea. Our program may also not handle it accurately even when meeting an expected fault. 
Some distributed applications are designed to tolerate photo faults on parts of nodes and the, and the fault tolerancy need tools to test. To ensure the home system works as expected when receiving requests or responses, we create the HTTP kiosk to hijack and modify our HTTP messages. You can see the picture. Uh, we we play the, me, the man in the middle and the chase, you both the client and the server. And we will inspect the messages and do some actions, some evil actions. Before we get start get get started to uh, share the implementation details, we should talk about Kinergy base. The four engine contents will be referred to some terms of Linux network, Linux, Linux space, and HTTPS. If I'm not clear enough, or if you have any question, please ask in the chat no, and I will try my best to answer after the presentation. Uh, we need Linux network like bridge, root, or IP tables, EP tables, and the net namespace, and the HTTP, and the TLS support. Yes. First, let's uh, look at the net namespace of target process. To hijack the HTTP messages, we need to run a tool named KST proxy in the net namespace of the target process by the help of NS enter. The KST proxy will reconstruct the network topology of target network namespace. You can see the picture. This is the net namespace of target pro process. And the NS enter runs in it and the folks of KST proxy sub program sub sub process. In the origin network environment of target net namespace, the inbound and outbound network packages are passed through the device ENS33. In the new network environment, all network packages passed through the device ENS33 will be redirected by the bridge. You can see, this is the origin network environment. Packages are passed through device ENS33 directory. And this is the reconstructed network environment. All packages will be redirected to the VTH1. Uh, now let's focus on the new network environment. We create a sub-network namespace and two VTH pairs and send all network packages to the VTH1. And in the sub-network namespace, the bridge 2 receive packages from VTCH2 and send packages to VTH3. In such a sub-network namespace, all packages are passed on data link layer. We can pass them on network layer again by the EP tables legacy. After we pass them on network layer again, we can run a special transparent proxy, which is supported by the IP tables extensions, named tproxy here to hijack and modify all network net packages. You may think the network topology is too complicated. Could we have a simple network environment? Uh, as we all know, more complicated may cause more bugs. Yes. Why we need the sub network namespace? Could we run a transparent proxy strategy? The topology above seems to also work. See the picture? Actually, a transparent proxy running in the origin network namespace can also hijack all HTTP messages. 
However, there are some drawbacks in this solution. Foreign is the drawbacks of topology without sub network namespace. The first, the TCP ports of clients or servers inside may change. And the second, the IP addresses of clients or servers outside change. And the third, outbound traffic cannot be transparent. The first and second drawbacks may cause existing connection interrupted and cause different behavior of clients or servers. For example, if a server inside only allow requests from specific IP address, the request set by IP proxy may be rejected. And the third drawback means all outbound packages have, have to change IP addresses or port because all output packages will be redirected to input chain. During, during this redirection, or marks in the out before the output chain will be cleaned and we cannot distinguish if a package has been hijacked. Uh, now, uh, our key proxy can receive the requests and returns the response naturally. And we let's talk about the inner, inner works of key proxy. Yeah. The key proxy consume requests, send requests to target server, and returns responses to client before it sends requests and returns respond responses, it will select them to apply actions according to the rules. There are six steps in each rule of HTTP class. Select request and apply actions and send the request. Then receive response from the server and select response, then apply actions. Now, Let's try to write and apply a rule. And study. Uh, firstly, uh, we will try to abort request or response. All ex examples are written in format of Chaos Mesh CRD in Kubernetes. You can see the picture is a configuration. After this config being applied, all requests sent to the AT port by get method will abort before being sent to target edge server. You can see the target is request port is AT and the method is get. Pass is a wildcard means any pass and abort is true. Okay, you can look at this picture for a while. Uh, next, we will try to delay request or response for duration. The so duration can be human readable. You can see this, this configuration. It, uh, it removes the abort field and set the delay field to one second compared to the abort example. After this config being applied, all, all requests sent to AT ports by get method will be delayed for one second before being sent to the target and server. Then, we will try to patch the body of request or response. Uh, this example, in this example, the body will be patched by the provided JSON following the JSON merge patch RFC. After this config being applied, body of requests sent to the AT port by get method will be patched with this JSON. And finally, we will try to replace the status code and body of target responses. Uh, you can see the configuration. The response of request sent to AT port by get method will be modified to status code 502 and replaced, it, replaced with the empty body. 
Yeah. And now we know how to use HTTP calls. Uh, next, we will talk about the uh, uh, important some other important features. First is a hypertext transfer protocol secure support. It is usually used to protect HTTP connection from middle in man in the middle attacks. To hijack the HTTPS connection, we must provide a trusted certificate and the private keys for our custody proxy. And in the simple, simplest case, user can provide the same certificates and the private keys with the servers. Uh, uh, most, uh, most cases for the uh, inside in cluster server. Then we can chase clients with the true certificates. You can see the picture? Our t props have the same certificate and the private key with the server. So the client cannot realize that the HTTP connection is hijacked. And sometimes, it's, uh, especially for the outcast server, users cannot provide the same certificates and private keys with the server. So we must sign a fake certificate and inject into the root seal list of clients. Uh, as we self sign a fake cert and private key for our T proxy, we must inject the fake cert or the root cert to the client root CA list. Yes. And in this case, the client also cannot realize the messages is hijacked. Uh, and next, let's talk about the plugins. Currently, we like actions to be applied to requests and responses, especially to deal with the body. The format of body is too flexible to apply rigid actions. So, we designed plugin interfaces to empower users to define their action by programming code. Uh, the WebAssembly is a really, really good choice to implementing the user defined function, UDF. We create a WebAssembly runtime for users to define their custom actions by different program, programming languages. Here is a plugin example with just, just 15 lines of Rust. Uh, you can look at it. You if you're interested in the Rust program language. Yes, we just uh, use the macro register response handle and pass it a uh, uh, lambda, yes, or you can call it a closure. And the, and the uh, handle receives the response, response and uh, pro do some processing and uh, return the body with ser serialized by JSON. Yes. But uh, create and maintain a web assembly runtime may cost too much works. Compared to web assembly, the native executable file has different advantages and disadvantages. The the main advantage is do not need a customized runtime and it is very fast. Uh, and the disadvantage is no natural isolation and the binary may be too large to distribute because uh, the WebAssembly run, uh, web assembly binary runs on our provided uh, customized runtime. So, it is isolated naturally, but for the binary, native, native binary or native script, we must, we must isolate it by the other tools like Linux, Linux namespaces, yes. And the binary, for example, for the uh, Go or Rust, the 
static linked binary may be too large to distribute. And for the uh, uh, for the C C plus plus with the uh, dynamic link or some scripts, it may need more dependencies to distribute. It's much more complex. Yes. Uh, we now use the web assembly. Yeah. But uh, in the future, we are considered to uh, in, implement a native one to be choiced by the users. Uh, that's all. Thanks again for joining me. If you have more questions, you can join our Slack channel or send me send me an email. Send me an email. Yes. Thank you.